गुड आफ्टरनून अर्चिता प्लीज टेक योर सीट How are you? I'm fine, sir. Thank you. Please continue to be fine. <laughs> yes, sir. Could you have your lunch? Uh, not yet, sir. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, sir, I had ragi bhakri. <coughs> millet, sir. Yes, sir. Good. I'm asking these hotel people to take to the millet revolution. Yes, sir. I think it is time yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, my personal positive choice is all millets. good for me too thank god we just had our uh, lunch otherwise even the reference to ragi bakri uh, uh, is mouth watering <laughs> <coughs> there is quite a lot on your daf to discuss yes sir out of all of it i am sort of choosing to start because even i enjoy that reading and reviewing non fiction books So tell us, uh, among the best, huh? Your best, <coughs> best of non-fiction books you have read, and or reviewed. Uh, so since my first preference is the foreign service, I try to streamline my reading on foreign policy issues. So uh, the recent books that I've read, one is Wires of War. It discusses how technology has a role in geopolitics today. And there's another one called <laughs> India versus China by Mr. Kanti Vasudevan. It discusses the India-China relationship. With your uh, interest in foreign service, I'm sure you know the terms hawk and dove. Yes, sir. So Kanti Vasudevan is a hawk. Yes. Sir. <coughs> Do you agree? Oh, so I would say he tried to balance <coughs> his arguments in the book. so uh, he divided the book into four parts essentially uh, what the problems with india and china are uh, one is the perimeter problem or boundary dispute the second is the partnership <coughs> that india has uh, and the third is the power asymmetry that india has so he tried to give i would say uh, very objective suggestions uh, how we can uh, counter the china challenge today do we carefully need to study sun zhu's art of war i would say yes sir hmm? Why? china's uh, entire policy i would say <coughs> based on the fundamentals quoted by sun zhu uh, for example his idea on on psychological warfare or deception very recently the us shot down the spy balloon and i think that is a testimony to china's deceptive parts actually even a more sort of dangerous concept i found was to win the war without actually fighting the war yes sir how would china seek to seek to do that with india uh so the first is the uh, its uh, actions at the border i would say the careful salami slicing it has been trying to do that is one it's not even fighting a battle as in 1962 and yet sort of winning in what it wants to achieve uh the second is also the way it has been flouting the international law norms for example in the south china sea there is no action there is no military uh uh drills going on and yet it continued to win in a way how about having the fifth <laughs> columnist within india Who would actually already prepare the ground for Chinese success? Uh, so, uh, uh, do you mean the media? The first. You. Term, it could be media. It could be so-called intellectuals. It could be historians. It could also be politicians. There is a very serious news about a very major party entering into sort of a personal party agreement with Chinese Communist Party. <clears throat> given our history there so, are always I, collaborators so i think the cpim uh, it was alleged that they have some links with the chinese so i'll have to read more on it point i am discussing is china seeking to win the war without actually fighting the war yes sir 
so uh, again i would say that the way it has tried to shape the entire uh, idea about it i would say that's also contributing to how it's <coughs> living without fighting fine all the best thank you sir please continue my yeah morning archita how are you <coughs> fine sir thank you okay with your uh, interest in ir and diplomacy and we hope you go on to become an ambassador <coughs> israel and its relationship with the muslim world how is it unfolding so uh, i think there has been a change in the way the israel and arab countries <coughs> had their relations uh, starting with the the uh, the rapprochement with egypt back in the 1970s today it's more wide uh, uh, through the abrahamic accords uh, today itself in the newspaper <coughs> i read how the omanian air space is open to israelis today so i think it's a uh, it's a change that is to be seen okay and what do you make of iran again enriching <coughs> iran they have admitted that they have enriched to the required percentage so uh, i think a part of their actions is also a resultant of the maximum pressure policy followed in the trump era so uh, today at this stature they are at a point when they have been uh yeah. being as they have been trying to <coughs> project themselves as an irritant and i think their enrichment comes from that <coughs> sorry mm. what would you say about the possibility of pakistan selling its nuclear weapons or its nuclear technology considering their financial situation so the concerns are i would say legitimate considering the nuclear walmart and <coughs> mr ek khan however today i think the norms are such uh, about or uh, from the uh, across the international community that pakistan dis- despite being uh, interested in doing that will be constrained in its choices uh, the norms are such the no, norm uh, you mean iran won't buy them <coughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Or Saudi Arabia won't buy buy them. Iran, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, plenty of oil money. Do you think one of them could make an offer? So even though it's an enticing offer, I think Pakistan will be constrained to not exercise it. It needs IMF money badly. It won't endanger it. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Archita. Good afternoon, sir. you have this interesting uh, mention in your dap about tool to generate semantically sound asl translation mm. yes what sir. is it about uh, so so essentially we took english sentences and generated american sign language equivalent videos of that <coughs> which is based on the uh, american sign language grammar okay so yes. you developed it for whom Uh, so we developed it as as a hobby, but mm-hmm. uh, we we didn't <laughs> patent it or commercialize it. Okay, but have you given this technology to be used for someone? Uh, no, sir, not not, not yet. No. Okay, what is this uh, neuromorphic computing? Have you heard about it? Neuromorphic computing. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think it's based on the way our brain functions. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Using that same functionality in computing. <laughs> okay. and what are its applications uh so for example neural networks deep mm-hmm. neural networks mm-hmm. uh the famous chat gpt that mm-hmm. also works on neuromorphic computing okay if you want to have image recognition for that which kind of underlying technology will you be using for image recognition so the first would be <coughs> to take the input uh, of the image mm-hmm. and then would be the machine learning okay yes. okay ठीक है सो इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इमेज रिकोगशन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट फेशियल रिकोगशन हाउ फेशियल रिकोगशन इम्पैक्ट सिविल लिबर्टी सो द प्राइम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ फेशियल रिकोगशन इज टू शूट पीपल एंड टेक देयर फोटोग्राफ्स सो इफ फेशियल रिकोगशन इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट जनरेट्स द कंसर्न ऑफ सर्वेलेंस अक्रॉस द कंट्री Yeah. So I think that will be against the civil liberties of right to privacy or right to uh, freely move around. I would say. 
Okay. Any country investing big into the special information <coughs> technology and subsequent surveillance? So China is one country which is actively doing facial recognition. Okay. Has India started it somewhere? So on a very limited basis, we have mm -hmm. the NAFRS uh, mm -hmm. for criminal tracking, mm -hmm. but it's not a surveillance. I would say it's just for criminal tracking and for procedural issues. Okay. Have you heard the concept called Indian train syndrome? Indian train syndrome. No, sir. I'm sorry, I've not heard of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I will just explain it in a while. It is a complete stranger when he is traveling in a train. He will reveal all his information, disclose all his information to even uh, person sitting nearby to him. That basically tries to convey that Indians doesn't care about privacy. Do you feel the same? I would say yes, sir. The, uh, the conversation about privacy is late in India. For example, uh, we see our telephone bills. Uh, those papers are at the uh, sweet shop or just flying around. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think Indians, the concept of privacy is late also because we <coughs> believe in Asian values, we believe in community. Uh, so I think that way it's late. But having said that, it is slowly developing. For example, uh, with the Aadhaar judgment or with the Putuswami judgment, I think Indians have developed. With these judgments, we have got right to privacy. Yes. But there has not been a single legislation which is actually securing uh, this right to privacy of ours. So we are in the process of the data protection bill. Mm -hmm. uh, very recently we brought out the 2022 version also. So uh, apart from the Supreme Court guarantee of right to privacy under Article 21, <coughs> we are also having a legal framework. It's in the making. Okay. What is the significance of the use of term Indo-Pacific? So, Indo-Pacific is a geopolitical construct today. Uh, since the, ge the gravity has shifted towards Asia first and second in the marine environment, Indo-Pacific uh, tries to uh, tr tries to uh, involve the same. So okay. Okay. Last question from my end. Do you believe that we are living in the world of complex interdependence? I would say so. Yes, sir. Then still how we are facing this Russia-Ukraine war? So the first is the whole objective of Russia-Ukraine war was not as such dependent on complex interdependence. And the second, Russia has actually tried to weaponize that same interdependence by weaponizing energy for the, Euro for the Europeans. Uh, <coughs> these are the two reasons that we still see the war. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Archita. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. How are you feeling? Good afternoon, sir. I'm feeling good, fine. good, good. Fine. You, are you a Delhiite? Uh, yes, I was brought up in Delhi. Uh, one year ago, I shifted to Gurugram. So, may I presume then that you should be very familiar with Delhi and you should be knowing most of the things about Delhi? Yes, sir. I will try to answer, sir. Moti Bajar gaye hai kabhi? No, sir. Chor Bajar? No, sir. Shandni Chowk? Yes, sir. Achha, good. Chalo, ek jaga to ghoomi ho kam se kam. <laughs> Uh, air quality of Delhi is a big concern. Bombay and Delhi <coughs> compete with each other in taking the first place. At least they compete in something, you know. <coughs> How many air quality monitoring stations are there in Delhi and where they are situated? I am not aware of the exact... Koi baat. Koi Badarpur Thermal Power Station, what is its <laughs> status as on today? I think so, it has been decommissioned due to the air pollution norms. When? Uh, so, not sure of the date, uh, the year. Till what time it was closed? So, I think till around 2010 it was active, I think it got decommissioned after that. After up, the NGT ban, I think. Up, up to what year, you know, it remained decommissioned? So, I am not aware of the... Dekh le Yes. Delhi ki ye jo constant pollution hai, not only Delhi, NCR. Iske liye ek bahut bada initiative jo hai, wo socha gaya tha. I am not sure whether it has started or not. It was <coughs> called the Great Green Wall of Aravali. What was that initiative? 
I think it was uh, a drive for afforestation throughout the Aravalis uh, in the NCR region. Oh, toh yar, naam se pata chal raha hai. Yes. Whether you know the details or not. No, sir. I'm sorry, sir. For your information, it is to plant 1.35 billion new native trees over 10 years period on a pathway of 1600 kilometer long, 5 <coughs> kilometers wide. If that happens, just imagine you know what all can happen. Yes. Water pollution is another very big, you know, issue for, you know, Delhi. United Nations Environment Program, which you must be aware of, <coughs> being a year student, UNEP, did a first ever study of its kind to examine how Delhi recycles its wastewater and what can be done to do it more efficiently. Are you aware of such study? No, sir, you are not aware at all. Are you aware the five main technologies which are used by Delhi for sustainable re reuse of its wastewater? So, oh, I'll have to read more. You will do well to you know read it. Okay. What is a ecosystem's health card? Uh, so the biological. Uh, the capacity that it has. Guess what? You have to know exactly. Pollution is a very big problem of the whole country, but especially Delhi. Yes, sir. So much so that Supreme Court, one judge has called is a living hell. Yes. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. And even Supreme Court in one case discussion told the center and the state government to seriously consider work from home. Yes, sir. For every facility. So, reading about it will do well. Yes, sir. I will definitely read. Delhi it. has, you know, five big biodiversity parks. Huge. Are you aware of them? I am sorry, sir. I am afraid I am not aware of them. <laughs> Please have a look at them. They are worth visiting. Yes, sir. It's definitely. a huge effort which has been put by Delhi administration, not the current government only, but over a period of, you know, last 20 years, it has been done and the residents of Delhi do not know about it. Are you aware how much of municipal waste is generated by Delhi? Sir, 11,000 uh, tons, I think. You are almost near it, 11,144 was the last figure. Yes, sir. What is the unit used for it? It um, is TPD. Yes. How much of it, what percentage of it is treated actually? <coughs> so, I, I think a very less... You do not it. know about it. Yes. Waste to treatment, waste to energy plants after treating, <coughs> WTE plants they are called. How many are there in Delhi? So, I think three. Oh. Three. Where are they? So, one is in Okla. Yes. Uh, one is near Ghazipur. Ghazipur, yes. Uh, so, one I am unable to recall. Right? Very famous, which was in news also for a fire in the landfill near it. Okla. Bhalsova. Bhalsova, yes. Bhalsova. Right. Noise pollution is also a big issue. You agree? Yes, sir. I would agree. There is a term used for identifying the hot spots. You know what are hot spots? Uh, so, the areas which contribute a lot to noise pollution? A lot that anybody would say, but exact, you know, decibels which define hotspots. Uh, how many hotspots are there in Delhi? Any idea? No, sir, I am sorry. Nahin? No. Bilkul. <coughs> International relations seems to be your, you know, stronghold. Hmm? <laughs> Like a bridge player, you have some strong <coughs> holes. Can you tell me, you know, how many claimants, claimant nations are there in South China Sea dispute? Uh, so, one is China, Vietnam, Philippines, uh, Cambodia is also involved. Philippines so, and Cambodia, are they? Philippines, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. 
Thank sir, you. Sir, Good. I heard uh, him speak about the South China Sea. What do you understand by the word nine grade line? Uh, sir, yes, sir, the nine dash line. Uh, sir, it's essentially on the map, if we uh, try to chalk out these nine dash lines, those are the areas and the islands claimed by China. How have they made those? Any idea? How did those nine dash lines really come up? Uh, sir, I think the territorial baseline concept uh, from the, uh, the baselines of, from the coast of China, they tried to extrapolate that and get through those lines. <coughs> Any idea? Is that right? What they have made nine dashed lines? When did they come up? Tentative. Uh, sir, 2016 is when the award was <coughs> given by the PCA. So, before that is what I know. So, you are talking about the international arbitration? Yes, sir. Who, whose favour did it go then? Uh, sir, in favour of the... Uh, it was against China. Right. So, no, who's, which country did it go in favour of? Uh, Who had put that uh, <coughs> international arbitration? The Philippines, I think. Philippines, okay. <coughs> you heard the chairman say something about it. And he said that the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without a fight. Yes, sir. In that context, how do you see salami slicing? You sir. heard this word, salami slicing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very piecemeal approach of taking the enemy's territory without fighting an active battle or a military combat. That's what China has been doing with us also. Well, how do you see in this context salami slicing? When somebody says salami slicing, what is it? What is it that you understand by the word salami slicing? So it's the way we eat salami. It's it's coming from the food. Yeah. Yeah. How do you translate it on ground? How when you say that the Chinese are using salami slicing or what we just said, without a fight, how are they acquiring land? Are they or is it just a talk? That is, uh, so by shifting their shifting the goalposts basically towards the enemy okay. in a, a discreet <clears throat> manner. How do you see the Taliban affecting Pakistan through so-called proxy the Tehrik Taliban Pakistan? How do you see now the situation in Pakistan? Uh, sir, the Durand line has always been a point of contention between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So, uh, today if we see the CTP has become active. 2007 is when it came in the limelight with the Lal Masjid siege. And today the very recent Peshawar attacks, they show that TTP is still an active player in Pakistan. And it's... Uh, it, it will achieve what it wants to essentially and prove that uh, it's actually Duran's curse Have for Pakistan. Have you heard anything by Imran Khan speak on Tariq Taliban Pakistan? Uh, no, sir. <clears throat> okay. How do you see in India being seen by China? How in your mind you visualize? Have you ever been to a foreign country? Uh, sir, I've been to Germany. You have been to Germany? Yes sir. Okay. How long did you stay in Germany? Uh, sir, I went for a model United Nations. So, I stayed there for around 9-10 days. 19 days. Yes. You saw the Berlin Wall? No sir, I went to Stuttgart. Uh, it's oh, so a you went to Stuttgart and got back. Yes. Did you get a time to go to Austria to Innsbruck from there? Uh, no sir. You didn't go to Innsbruck. You mm -hmm. went to Stuttgart and you got back. So, we were busy with the conference only. So, I just went to the Heidelberg Castle and saw the Mercedes-Benz <coughs> factory. But you've also been allotted some uh, this thing? You have already been allotted uh, uh, this thing in your last interview? Oh uh, Yes sir, the Indian Revenue Service Income Tax. You have already started? Uh, sir, I am on an extraordinary leave. Achy, you are not. So, now we are coming back to the question. Yes. How does China see India? Uh, sir, as the saying goes, there can't be two lions or tigers in a jungle. I think that's what China feels for us. Uh, they think that they are the superpower in Asia and they want a very limited standing of India. And that's how they are achieving all. That's why they are achieving what they are wanting to achieve. Where do you see the Ukraine-Russia war heading after the anniversary today? This is a column there. So tactically speaking, I think it's going to continue as a war of attrition uh, towards a stalemate, perhaps. Strategically, I think Mr. Putin will be able to tell us when he wants to end the battle. 
yes. why should you end the battle when you were recommended for war? Yes. So I think the objectives <coughs> of the war, they are far from being achieved. Today, uh, he expected uh, Finlandization of NATO. It's actually the reverse, the NATOization of Finland and Sweden. Uh, Russia, uh, Ukraine has moved closer to the uh, European Union and uh, NATO is far more active and the West is also far more active in the region. So I think it's in the best interests of both the countries to end the war. Okay, thank you. Sir. Thank you. I am just looking for one small sort of clarification. Yes, sir. On the DAF, for a very specific question, have you ever accepted allocation to a service? or post? You are saying no. Uh, so actually the job letters and the service allocation wasn't made when we filled the DAF. So the DAF we filled in July but the service allocation came in mid-August. Hmm. So that's why I wrote recommended but not allocated. Hmm. And formally not yet joined, huh? Uh, so I am on an extraordinary leave. So formally you joined the service? I have joined the service but took a one year leave. And you have not undergone any training also, what's no, that? Okay. Your birth date is 31st of October. Yes, sir. Will that attract any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Two, I would say. First is uh, Lopurush Sadar Patel Vallabhai's birthday and also National Unity Day celebrated since 2014. And the second is the assassination day of uh, Mrs. Indra Gandhi. Which one of the two would you like us to discuss? Uh, as you please, sir. Okay. Then I will please not to discuss. <laughs> okay, sir. For want of time, really. Okay, sir. You did your schooling from MIT school. Yes, sir. What is this group, MIT? Uh, so it's a group of private unaided schools uh, under the Ritnan Palvey Education Foundation. So my school is one of those schools. Is it the same as? MET University later on? Uh, it's the same foundation which runs the university. The schools and university are not connected. How was the school quality? So it was good. What exactly is semantics? So semantics means uh, sensible sentences basically. So uh, which makes, as per English grammar or any language grammar, it should make sense. For example, uh, I came pizza is not semantically sound. I came here to eat pizza is semantically sound. <coughs> so many bureaucrats talk language which is not semantically sound. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wouldn't agree to that, sir. What is the latest blog you wrote? Uh, sir, I'm not very active on writing blogs now. I used to write in college. You did a job at Hyderabad, looks like spread across two years. Yes, sir, at Microsoft, sir. What was your role? So I was a software engineer with Microsoft. And I presume you left it to pursue civil service? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know capable Indian Foreign Service lady officers? Uh, so both so uh, so as uh, as far as the retired serving uh, retired officers go, I think it started with Mrs. C B Muthamma and Mrs. Nirupama Roy Menon, uh, Mrs. Chokila Ayer, uh, Mrs. Neera Shankar also. And as per the serving officers, I would say uh, Mrs. Nam Gambhir was famous for her role at the HRC. And uh, two very famous and young officers were uh, Vidisha Mehra and uh, Sneha Dubey. Both of them also, uh, they were famous for calling out Pakistan at the UN. You got a chance to read Nirupama Rao's books? Uh, so, Fractured Himalaya is on my list. I haven't been able to read Not it. yet. Okay. Yes. We look forward to your finding time to read. All the very best. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you. Thank you. Take your seat, Archita. Yes, Very happy 35 minutes. <laughs> so I are, would ask your opinion on that. It was happy for me. Very happy, yeah. We are all very happy. 
thank you sir one mark of it is like time flies like this that you never know the natural flow yes, sir. and your answers and don't worry about delhi details okay sir <laughs> without worrying for it do study yes sir Definitely. you have time on hand yes and it is possible that some panel member may want to just see how you have lived your life in delhi yes sir as an inquisitive young officer so these many details and delhi being delhi the range of possible questions on delhi is infinite yeah yes. very true so it could be about history uh, music uh, some social parts you are beginning to look worried no sir not <laughs> not sir uh, Uh, so I think sir was really helpful in giving a lot of uh, ideas. I will prefer prepare yeah, all yeah, of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's you know they, these are you know the uh, required ones. So pollution is one subject, and you know basically economic problems. You know NCR itself. You know migration mm -hmm. issues. Uh, migrate. So <coughs> lot of th these things are there. But you did well. Where you didn't know, you said it with a smile. You didn't come under pressure. You held your nerve. So we are very happy, sir. So we are selecting you for foreign service. Thank you. <laughs> Everything it needs for a foreign service officer. Uh, I have also heard Sneha Dubey uh, deliver that very effective uh, yes. reply yes, sir. to Pakistan's nonsense. Someday we look forward to you being there <laughs> and the clip going viral. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so t take time to study without getting disturbed about about day it's not like you are not well prepared or something there is always some more always to prepare there is a beautiful book by khushwan singh on delhi the very name of the book is delhi and times of india published a coffee table book not that you must read it but if you find time just scanning through may help and otherwise wherever the, the details you don't know it is perfectly okay to okay. smile which you are doing and say i'm sorry i don't know or that i will study uh, etc or thank you for pointing it out i will take time to study that and all but you are coming across as very well <coughs> uh this person shriram chauliya he teaches at jindal school huh? uh, so he is the dean he doesn't actively teach acha yes. so it's not like he conducted lectures for you No, also not actively. Somehow, uh, occasionally, if he has a lecture. Yeah. I must tell you, I found him a high quality person. His books are high quality books. Uh, genuinely uh, 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 balanced, detached. So fine. The one of the books by him is Modi Doctrine. Yes, sir. And he has also recently come out with one more book. On national something on national security. Yeah. Also. Yeah. so all very good china discussion went off very well uh, how did your previous interview go with upsc uh, so so uh, i think uh, the first question was something which i wasn't prepared so i i just rambled something mm, and uh, it went downhill after that my god okay yes sir. so what was the score so 165 uh, so whose panel was it uh, so smita raj uh, smita nagraj man spoke you happen to remember that question where you think it rambled on yes uh, so it was uh, basically so i was expecting some ice breaker question mm. but they were like hello archita uh, mm. so you work for microsoft uh, why does india not have a company like microsoft mm. so i had prepared so much but i forgot to prepare this yeah, one yeah. yes sir okay okay uh, then uh, going by today's interview i see no chance whatsoever of this happening now <laughs> i okay. hope so sir yeah. and there was also one more reason why i brought up the previous interview yes sir because of late we have come to also sort of know or i would also say it's our mathematical deduction that when upsc sees a youngster coming for the interview again they know ha huh? so it is possible that the interview may go in non daf direction so you sort of need to be <coughs> mentally ready for a non daf interview i'm sure you have noticed some of the youngsters previously cribbing 
because not one question from the deaf was asked. Yes, sir. I would say main reason why they crib is because they walk into the interview hall with expectations <coughs> that the interview will be based on deaf. Yes, sir. And when they find one question after another, the mind begins to shout sitting there that what does this question have to do with my deaf and what does that question has to do. So, I think it is a very important part this time for you okay, sir. to be sort of mentally ready. And then we really hope it gets uh, centered around foreign policy issues and you are reading and reviewing the books. Why am I feeling you are getting worried? No, sir, not at all. Non-deaf and I, oh, I mean. No, I, sir, I am prepared for non-deaf also. Huh? Yes, sir. So, I sort of this rich uh, uh, deaf that you have, I hope it prompts the panel to focus on what you are now interested in. So, the foreign policy issue. <coughs> because, okay, at some point of time you wrote a blog, you have also carefully done MA in diplomacy, law and international from Jindal school. Yes, sir. So on and so forth. So, today you are coming across very well. Okay, sir. Uh, for us, the, to the best of our judgment, that was the reason why we also lay deke focused on various uh, international issues. By 10th of March, there could be some many more. Uh, throughout the interview, I would say only one point uh, where I thought in spite of probably knowing the answer and the implication, the sentence you said does not really fit. In uh, Russia, Ukraine, and he was discussing yes, sir. interdependence what is the exact word you use? Complex interdependence. Ah, complex interdependence. Okay. Your sentence indicates that Russia-Ukraine war, that Russia invaded Ukraine, means Russia does not believe in complex interdependence or Russia-Ukraine war has not adversely affected complex interdependence. When you see the video, pay attention to that part. Huh? Okay. Actually, even Russia-Ukraine war does indicate complex interdependence. In fact, the war broke supply chains. Uh, sir, I mentioned weaponization of complex huh. interdependence. Huh. But they, you have said that it has not affected something to that, that effect yeah. because I, I noted it immediately. I will see the video. Sir. Only one part. Okay, sir. So, like uh, that weaponization also means supply of energy to <laughs> Europe. And that complex interdependence also means Russia and Ukraine right in the midst of the war at a point of time agreed uh, to further trade of wheat. wheat. So, you know that. Yes, sir. Rest of it you are all like absolutely up to it. Very precise answers. Uh, also citing correct references uh, which means substantiating what you are saying very well. Even in last year's interview, were you sitting there like this with UPSC? So there was a table, so I don't remember. There I was a like table. Huh. Or do you want to sit with your hands tied in your lap? Uh, so what would be a suitable posture? Uh, posture in the sense, our suggestion key is being natural. If you are comfortable in this, good enough. If you are doing it because you have been taught to do this and you are constraining yourself, then it is wrong, then don't do it. Be natural. Yes, sir, this is fine. Uh, sometimes we naturally gesticulate when we are explaining a point. I try to control that, sir. Why? Need not be. If I am speaking to you, my hands are automatically coming up, na? Yes. For example, I said, need not be. It's only emphasizing what I am saying. So, these are all very natural parts of conversation. Okay. So, it is wrongly being, you know, uh, imposed <coughs> on candidates that control this, control that. What happens then? Brain is occupied with yes. <laughs> looking at those things, you know. Hmm? Our suggestion. Thank you, sir. Okay, excellent. All you have to do is continue to be supremely update uh, as of 10th of March. Yes, sir. 
sir. You are going to come out with flying colors. Thank you so much. No rambling this time. Yes. Uh, even last time, actually, based on your quality, we saw now. If you had like another thirty marks last time, you would already be in IFS. Yes, sir. Huh? But last time is last time. Now it is this time. Yes, sir. And for even today's interview, I am happy to. to the best of my judgement about how upsc interviews would go 191 plus thank you so much ha uh, uh, but on 10th of march we would want you to go for best of the score in upsc interview yes you know what is it sir i think 215 is the maximum well, yes sir and she is indian foreign service officer yes sir and i am happy that she is chanakya mandal student I have seen her video, sir. You have very good. Yes, sir. Good. So, like, go for two hundred and twelve, yes. not one ninety one. I will try. Sir. Yeah, yeah. And let so us know what? after your interview how did it go. Sure, sir. And uh, according to us, you are already there. Excellent one. Hmm? <coughs> so, what more is needed for from one ninety to two hundred? Ha! I would say the uh, the <coughs> razor sharp updatedness as of tenth of March. Only to make that point. Uh, even today, I have noted at 191, and partially Delhi issues. What else? Delhi, no. since childhood and schooling and what not. It's not like I have deducted any marks or something. Not uh, for that. But it is only to draw your attention to being update as of 10th of March. Okay, sir. Because 215 crore cross करने के लिए तो फिर थोड़ा सा extraordinary yeah. effort थे. Each next one mark, huh? <laughs> Year onwards. You have to fight <laughs> for each one mark. Uh, yeah. But with every sentence, I am finding why are you slightly like responding like you are worried. No, sir, not at all. Acha. Probably I am thinking about uh, Ragi Bakri again. <laughs> that could be one reason. Thinking of Ragi Bakri again. Ah, great. Okay. Than that. Yeah, yeah. It is lunch time. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe that. That's why. Maybe. Really? Good. Enjoy your Ragi Bakri. But you have to go <laughs> yeah. to Guru Gram all the way. Yes, sir. Ah, so still some little time. Yes, sir. No, no issue. Okay, Archita. Thank you so much, sir. Thank God you. bless you. Yeah, these are not for the panel members for you. Thank you, sir. Do stay in touch yes, and let sir. us know after tenth yes, how the sir, interview definitely. went. Nothing to worry at all. Just keep smiling and remain relaxed. Thank huh? you so much. Brush up and all the best. God bless. God bless you.